Let's give Kev another round of applause. Come on up. That chair might break. Why don't you go in this one? Oh, I'll take the, uh, the hot seat. It's going to be repaired. It is. Yeah, you have to okay. make love to it. You have to put it very close to your mouth. So, Kevin, tell us who you are and what you do. Um, my name is Kevin Haggerty. I'm uh, a GP. I've been a GP in Western for 34 years. Quite a 34 while. years. Yeah. That's nearly as long as I've been alive. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. And how did you get into being a GP? Ooh. Uh, that's a long story, but I, I got into being a GP because I, when I was at uh, medical school and we qualified and I was working on wards, what, really, what I really liked about working on the wards was getting to know the patients. And in most specialties, you don't really get mm. to know them properly. But yeah. general practice, I've been here so long, I've known several generations. It's just lovely. Fabulous. And GP surgery is it in Western. Do you see any of your uh, patients probably here? Probably 168 is where <laughs> I work. It used to be, uh, I used to work at Longton Grove, which is a little okay. Victorian building, which we then moved into the big building. Yeah, fabulous. And what is it about being a, a, a general practitioner that um, attracted you to the role? Uh, I've been, why, why, why have I become a GP? Yeah. Yeah, as I say, I just love... The continuity, getting to know people, following them through, and, and helping them. It is, it is a stressful job at times, but it's a lovely job. Yeah. There aren't many jobs where most people are grateful for okay. you know, 10 or 15 minutes of my time, <laughs> especially nowadays. So it's, it's, it is a rewarding job. But, yeah. Indeed, brilliant. Uh, and tell me how you, long you've been a part of St. Paul's. Is that 34 years or no, no, a bit less? but it's quite a long time, probably 15 years I've been coming. Okay, and who's your favorite vicar? Mm. I love them all. Turn his mic off. Very good. You shouldn't answer that question. Um, what attracted you to St. Paul's? Was there anything? Uh, well, I, well, I did, was going to the village. I live out at Limsham, yep. which isn't far. And I was going to that church for a while. Um, and then I was attracted really for the preaching, I think, more than anything okay. else. And uh, a few people from Limsham were coming here, so yep. I came with them. Yeah, who else we've got in Limsham? We've got... Um, Dennis, uh, the Rainers, haven't we? The Trats, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the local vicar is grateful um, to me that they leave there and come here. Anyway, it's one kingdom, we'll say that, it's yeah. one kingdom. Uh, and are you married? Do you have children? Are you... I'm married, I've got four children all grown up, uh, three boys and a girl. Yeah, and what do they do? Uh, the eldest is a... Criminal barrister in Bath. The next one's an accountant. Yep. The third is a music teacher. Wow. And the fourth, who's Megan, is, is a doctor. There we go. Fantastic. So you didn't put them off being a doctor? Well, the first three we did. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth slipped in. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Fantastic. And tell me, um, so I testify we're trying to hear um, uh, the testimonies of what Jesus has done in people's lives. Uh, and we, 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 we put a pause to our kind of mm. our preaching. Um, we're preaching at other services, Potters uh, and BCP during the week. Um, so we haven't completely been preaching here. Uh, but we want to hear um, the kind of interactions people have had with our Lord. Yeah. How for you, Kevin, um, did you come to faith or start to meet this man, Jesus? Yeah, right. So I, I was brought up as a Catholic. So from a baby in arms, I went to church every Sunday and would have heard the gospel preached or read. Um, but I believed in God, but I, I, I would hardly ever, well, I wouldn't read the Bible. Mm. Uh, and I would pray when I was in trouble. Um, uh, and then I went up to university uh, and several people knocked on my door. Mm. And uh, they were Christians and they were inviting me to meetings. And I'd say, look, I go to church on a Sunday. And, and one or two of them would say to me, but do you know Jesus? Oh. And I thought. Mm. And the other thing about them, they seem to have something about them, mm. some, some joy and something there. So I went back at Christmas time and I started thinking about that. And I'd been given a Gideon Bible. Mm. I don't yeah. know if they still give them out. They uh, do, yeah. Uh, New Testament and Psalms. So I rummaged and found that. And I took that back with me to university in the second term and started reading it. Very much thinking, I want to know Mm. If it's possible mm. to know God, know mm. Jesus. And starting in Matthew's Gospel, I mm. 
wonderful lines, seek mm. and you will find, ask mm. and you will receive. So as I read, I believed more and more. And at some point that belief turned into faith and mm. the Bible just came alive. Mm. And uh, I could truly say I knew Jesus. Fabulous. Sometime in the second term. More than that, mm. I fell in love with Jesus. I, no. I wrote a letter to my sister saying, I don't know, this is amazing but i have fallen in love with god mm. and you know i read this letter it was mm. so that uh, it was that dramatic mm. no fabulous uh, and yeah. then i started going to a baptist church my family couldn't really understand <laughs> i'd gone off to the moonies i think but um i went to a baptist church i met some young christians there and i was invited to a, a midweek group run by the navigators i don't yep. know people yeah yeah yep. yep. still around full group of mm. people who who set out to make disciples of all people and so my beginnings as a christian were rock solid they taught me some really good mm. sort of disciplines mm. prayer reading the bible memorizing scripture mm. all those things mm. fellowship so i started really well mm. and and in some ways it put it well in many ways it's very easy to be a christian as a student mm. you know no possessions <laughs> plenty of time lots of resources no responsibilities and then life starts yep. and we fast track about three more decades you'd find me in the church here january 2017 and on most ways of measuring me i'm doing really well i'm healthy yeah i'm i'm well off yep. i'm senior partner in the local mm. practice that's mm. doing well um but i'm sitting there and i know there's something horribly wrong with me. Mm. For, for years and years, I've been trying to get close to God again. Mm. And it's not happening. Mm. Um, and that's terrible. Um, so what so, happened? Well. <laughs> I'm assuming something happened or we need to start praying no, for you. No, no, something happened. Don't worry. Something happened. It was wonderful. So, so this is at January 2017. And, I, and I'm, sort of, I'm praying. I'm praying. You know, it's like we prayed just now. Come mm. Holy Spirit. Come mm. Holy Spirit. Nothing's happening. And there's this verse in revelation here i am i stand at the door mm. and knock you know that mm. verse if you hear my voice and open the door mm. come in mm. and eat with you and i could remember eating with jesus and it was mm. great mm. so i kept on saying come in come in but he didn't come in mm. and and it doesn't say invite him in. it says open the door mm. and you think well how do i open the door mm. anyway a series of things happened in quick succession i i did a i had quite a, a role in a leadership role in the local health economy. I was sitting on the board of the CCG as well mm. as being a GP one day a week. And I went for a leadership job and I didn't get it. And most people thought I would. And that sort of knocked me and made me feel a bit humble, I suppose. Yeah. And lost confidence in myself. And then my son became ill and was diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic. Mm. But worse than that, my a uh, wife who's a doctor had noticed he was losing weight mm. and was thirsty. She made the diagnosis. I was too busy mm. to spot that he was unwell. Mm. And that made me feel bad. Mm. Um, third thing that happened, our dog died, which was very sad. An old dog we had to have him put down. And during this time, coming up to the spring, uh, I was getting more and more anxious. I lost confidence in myself. I wasn't sleeping. And work is really difficult mm. when you're not well mm. and we're seeing lots of people very quickly with lots of problems sometimes symptoms that are very early on in their mm. illness and i became more and more worried about missing something mm. uh, and i would come home from work on a friday go to bed and wake early hours of the morning mm. worrying about people and mm. i'd worry all weekend until i went in on monday mm. and that went on for a while and then one friday i came into work and there was a letter from a patient who i felt i'd been slow in mm. referring mm. And it confirmed that they had cancer mm. and that was it really i just said to my partners i, said, I can't do it anymore mm. you know, i can't carry on and they said well go home you know you need a few weeks off work and you come back and i thought no there's no way i'm coming back i took all my personal things out of my room i thought i can't mm. do this job mm. anymore and i went home and um caroline my wife was rather surprised to see me early uh, and she knew i was struggling but mm. um and then on monday everyone went off to work and there was i and i thought what shall i do and we have a part of the garden we live in an old house out at limsham it used to have a vegetable garden well, and 
it was neglected. I never got time to go in and clear it. I used to stream it now and then. And I thought, well, here's a project. So I started out there clearing this vegetable garden full of brambles and thistles and stuff like that. And as I worked on that garden, I said to Jesus, look, this is my spiritual life. Look what mm. it's become. Can you clear it up for me? Mm. And you, I thought of the parable of the sower. Uh, you know, it says uh, the seed that falls on, on, on the thorns. Mm. You know, uh, you hear the word, but the worries of life, mm. uh, the deceitfulness of wealth, mm. and the desires for other things come mm. in and choke the word, making mm. it unfruitful. And that's mm. that was me all round. You know, just as this lovely vegetable garden in the past was now just covered in brambles and thorns. Mm. That was me. And I said, Lord Jesus, can you clear this up? Can you make good soil mm. out of this? And so I was working on the ground, digging up the weeds, really deep brambles and thistles and uh, bindweed, mm. and piling it all up in a corner in the sunshine. Uh, and at the same time, Jesus was talking to me. And, and then the next thing that came to me was the, this was a few days later, the parable of the prodigal son. Mm. And that made me really feel terrible that I had eaten with my father and mm. known intimacy with him, gone about his work, and then I just wandered off. Mm. And uh, we're all made in the image of God. So just as we feel heartbroken when our children do something like that, mm. so God feels heartbroken. Mm. Uh, and then the final thing that came to me is a, is a terrible verse in James where he say, says to Christians, he writes to Christians and he says, you adulterous people, mm -hmm. don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Mm -hmm. and anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. And so... Oof. That's quite direct, isn't that? All of that. Yeah. So as I was piling all these weeds up, I just said, look, Lord, you know, so I was burning them, in fact. I said, just as these weeds, you were un, you know, have been uncreated in a mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. they've been turned back into ashes, Lord, mm -hmm. on your cross, just... Take all that away, please. Mm. And he did. Um, and that's the amazing thing. You know, as far as God's concerned, that never happened in a way. Mm. I can remember it, and it's mm. good I remember it, because of the faithfulness of God, really. Mm. Uh, as a father, he welcomed me back. Mm. It's Jesus who welcomed me back. Mm. Um, and then, from then onwards, it's just been a great adventure, really. Mm. Uh, I came back to church, and worshipped as I haven't done for three decades. Mm. I asked somebody if I could join a branch group. There's mm. some of the branch group here from the from the Cape branch. And um, sounds like a great branch group, doesn't it? A small yeah, group, yeah. Just, yeah, we eat this yeah. wonderful cake and yeah. we, we, we read the word of God. Yeah. And wonderful things we've studied. We studied the book of Job. Mm. Right at the last words that Job mm. says after mm. he encounters God, he says my ears had heard of you, but mm. now my eyes have seen you. Mm. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Mm. Oh, so that was me. I thought this is wonderful. <laughs> um, and we also, just quite recently, we studied the seven letters in Revelation mm. to the seven churches. These are, Jesus dictates this to mm. his, his, his uh, friend and apostle, uh, John. Mm. Mm. These are seven churches that were established quite mm. recently. And we read again that uh, bit in Revelations, Revelation 3.20 about mm. the door knocking. Mm. And the verse before says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Mm. Therefore, be earnest and repent. Mm. And that's how we open the door. Mm. Um, but we don't, we don't learn that verse, do mm. we? We just learn the one after. And if you look at the seven letters, five of them have a call to repentance. Mm. And this is to Christians. Mm. Um, so anyway, at the end of the Friday, on the end of that week, I rang work and said, look, I'm coming back. I've never felt so well. And they said, you're not coming back. We saw you a week ago, and there's no way you're coming back. Not yet. You can't be well. So they said, you have to spend another week in the garden. <laughs> so I did. And all the soil was clear, and I started to think then, the best way of keeping the weeds out is to plant. Mm -hmm. And we plant by reading God's word. Mm. And so I set to to go back to my old habits mm. of in the morning and evening, prayerfully, mm. studying God's word. Mm. I have this little box of memory verses from three decades back, which I dug out and mm. started to read again. Mm. Went along to the 
branch group, mm. studied God's word, God's word together. And it's just amazing. Just as you might with, a, you know, with seeds in a garden, you can plant God's word mm. in your heart. Mm. And, and we're but soil. It's Christ who is mm. the gardener, mm. who, yeah. who grows mm. a garden in mm. our hearts. And uh, that's what I've been experiencing over the last few years. Kevin, that's fabulous, isn't it? Should we give him a round of applause? There's more, but a wonderful articulation. So if you're thinking, great, that worked for Kevin, but how does that work for me? Grab a Bible at the back of church. Um, you know, um, uh, we typically say if you're a bloke, go for Mark, because uh, it's easier for you to understand, for us to understand. Uh, and uh, if you're uh, a woman, go for Matthew, um, different um, kind of emphases on things and different detail. Um, uh, look at the Psalms if you want to hear um, kind of uh, anger, if you're feeling like God, you're angry with God, um, and hear the rawness in there, but then notice how it switches to God's victory. Uh, typically halfway through a psalm. Uh, do take a Bible. If you don't read, um, uh, for some of us, reading is difficult. I read my first book when I was 15, um, and so I'm late to reading too. There were um, great resources online, so bi um, Bible, what am I going for? Not Bible, but Bible Society is great, um, but I'm going for Bible Project. Uh, really good animations on there, really good podcasts on there. Uh, just Google stuff and you'll find stuff. Do, do check um, where it's come from. There's quite a lot of odd stuff out there. Um, if you're not sure, do speak to one of the leaders here. Um, if you want us to just say, have we heard of this person? Um, you know, or um, this person who's claiming to be a Messiah, um, is he the Messiah? And we say, no, he's not. Jesus is the Messiah. Um, but do go and look for those resources. Because as Kevin has said, if you can get into the daily pattern of coming to the word, spoken, watched, uh, or read by yourself, it grounds you. Because scripture is God's love letter to us. That's why we have it. It's him saying, this is you know, a really good guide. It doesn't have all the answers, but it has most of the answers. Uh, and by the relationship uh, of meeting Jesus, we find the answers as we journey with him. So Kev, what next in terms of um, where are you with Jesus? What's this adventure moving forward? Any thoughts, suggestions? Well, I'm close, close to retiring, I suppose, so, so that's something to think about. But, but, but God's changed my work. I, I, was, I was worn out at this fall. Mm. Now, every day, um, I go in ref ready to work and refreshed. And it's a training ground in some ways, because mm. my job is quite stressful, and mm. people knocking on my door disturbing me all the time. And so it's, it, it, it does test my attitudes mm. to people. Mm. And... and uh, as I say, I, I'm God's workmanship, so mm. I'm a work in hand. Mm. But uh, it's experiencing God. So after, after I finish work, I don't know mm. where I'm going after that. Mm. I'd obviously like to be more involved in Christian work. Mm. One of the frustrations of my job is I see people you know, who are desperate, who are ill, who are sometimes dying, um, and what they need is Christ. Mm. You know, and I'm mm. giving them medicine. Mm. I refer people to surgeons and physicians, mm. but I'd much rather refer them to Christ, mm. who could make them well. Fabulous. Last question for me, how is the garden? Oh, the vegetable garden's wonderful. It's got raised beds, we've had tomatoes, haven't we? I've got a little greenhouse with some peaches. There's some roses, there's some lavender. It's a wonderful place. My heart's not like that yet. <laughs> it's got a long way to go, but, but it's, it's just, when I'm in the garden, I, it's in fact the best place to be in the, in the, in the garden now, so yes. the end guests there as well. And that, that's uh, what I want my heart to be like. Fabulous. Is there any chance you could take a photo and send it in so we can share oh, it? Yes, I could do. Would people like to see a picture of the garden? <laughs> yeah, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Okay. Great. Can I pray for you, and would you then pray for us? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Let's pray for Kevin. Loving God, we do thank you uh, for the gift of Kevin, for all that he brings, for all that he does. Lord, thank you for uh, the honesty that he has shared uh, tonight on where he was with you, uh, how he uh, perhaps was going his own way. Um, but you never walked away. You only ever walked closer to him. Lord, thank you of that garden that you met him uh, in creation and you brought him back uh, to the creator, the one who created him and loved him uh, and does 
uh, love him for eternity. Lord, we pray that uh, he will know your love today. And Lord, as he goes back to his busy week, uh, looking after people, Lord, thank you for the gift that he is. And Lord, thank you for the gift that he is to this church. So we pray and bless it upon him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we ask you to bless him uh, and to walk with him each and every day. We know you will. We thank you for him. Amen. Oh Lord Jesus, I thank you that you didn't give up on me, that uh, your love for us uh, stretches to the horizon, Lord, that uh, nothing can separate us from us, Lord, from you, Lord, if we open our hearts to you. I thank you, Lord, that you led me to repentance, as you can lead all of us to repentance. And that we are your workmanship, Lord. We are but soil, and you are the gardener. And I pray, Lord, that you would grow a fruitful garden in all our hearts. That we would be able to spend time with you in that garden, Lord, and know you and love you. And that you would make us more and more in your image. And that you would make us ready, Lord, to spend eternity with you. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Let's give Kevin another round of applause.